All right. So in this video, we're going to go over um, REST APIs and sort of how to read the documentation um, in order to use it. The first thing you're going to need is this application called Postman. It basically is an application that just makes it much, much easier to test out REST APIs, particularly because it saves everything in the cloud. And that means that you can access it at any point. You can rerun the commands at any point and you can see uh, the results. You're going to see my work notifications because there's now a heated Windows versus Mac debate ongoing. <laughs> so sign up, download it. It's free. Um, and then go to this uh, URL. This is GitHub's uh, overview in their guides for getting started. And Postman is what's considered a wrapper library uh, around it basically uses JavaScript's fetch under the hood. And if you have any commands, you should be able to click this code button and then it'll show you how in JavaScript or any other uh, programming language that it supports, um, how to create that command. But anyway, so we get started and the first thing that it does is it has us execute a command. Now curl, if you don't pass any flags to it, just uses a git request. So the first thing you do is up to collections, you click new collection. I need my GitHub API URLs. This supports markdown. So if you do like this, um, you're going to get a unordered list. If you do this, single H1. If you do this, you get an H2 tag and so forth. We're going to be adding authorization in a bit, but basically this just says to send long special information on each request. So that way the server knows, um, the server knows who you are and can verify that you're supposed to get those resources. Pre-request scripts just mean if there was some JavaScript I wanted executed every time before a request, I could do it there. Um, tests would be after I run every single thing in here, I'd run a test. And the most important one for our future use is going to be this variables. So we have it here um, in order to, here's a link of the most common um, HTTP verbs. In this case, it's just going to be a basic uh, get. So this is what happens if you ask for the GitHub API URL itself. And what you're going to see is that it returns us a list of URLs, some of which we're going to be hit hitting. Um, the most important one uh, are these little things right here. This is what's called the mustache syntax. And the mustache syntax is just because if you take this and you flip it onto its side, it kind of looks like a mustache, hence the name. In particular, this is saying that if you uh, want to search for code in the API, you need to pass in a query and optionally you can ask for a uh, page, how many results per page, how you want to sort it and how you want to order it. And the same thing is right true right here. So here's a list of all the APIs that it uh, supports. And here's the first, Chris, how do I stop this from constantly spamming me? Oh, please. Mentions. There we go. Hopefully that will cut that out. All right. So here's our first URL. We send our request. And here's the results. You can see right here that it says text. This is going to tell you uh, what the return type is. And if you click under headers right there, uh, down here rather, these are the headers from the server. So what the server sent back, here's the headers that you're sending to the server. And you can see right here, the content type is text plain. This is usually not gonna be true uh, for most things. You can also see the status 200, which you can also see down here. You can see the X rate limit, which is how many requests you're allowed to send and a few other things, but the status and uh, the content type are the two big ones. So that's the first request that you send out. 
The second one is to get uh, a GitHub profile. So that's right here. I have instead used my URL instead of his. And I'm not sending anything special over and there's no body information and there's no parameters. Parameters are which get passed in like this. So if I do P equals one, you'll see now I have a query parameter down there, but that's not actually true. <laughs> I don't need that. Um, but you can either add them here or you can add them in line here. And whenever I send this request, you'll see my username, my avatar URL, uh, the GitHub main URL, so forth and so on, and information about me. You don't need to worry too much about this part um, because you're not using curl, so you automatically get the headers in every response. Now here's the um, authentication piece, and the way you do this is you get OAuth tokens. The way those work, uh, no. Actually, that will work. So you log into GitHub. You go here to settings. Scroll all the way down to, I believe, developer settings. And you'll see personal access tokens. A personal access token is basically how do I know who you are? And you are able to um, create special um, privileges for your token. It might make me, okay, I was worried it was going to make me uh, do another uh, two-auth authentication, but it didn't. So the note was the token for GitHub requests. We're going to want full control of the repos. We're going to want to be able to delete repos. And... Uh, let's see, I don't really see much else that we truly need access to. Um, but what this does is this allows us, as it says, to access um, these things and delete repo is its own thing because that allows us to delete a repository. The other stuff, GIS, are like little um, quick notes to yourself, basically quick little pieces of programming code. It's also searchable, so uh, occasionally I do that to look for little things that I forgot about, like how to write a comp file for Apache and things like that. Once you have that, you generate the token, and then you'll get one chance to copy this token. So click that. That enables the copy. Go to Postman. Click on this, and click on Edit. Where we have variables, I've already set up my token, but I can also set up another one right here. Update that. Of course, I'll delete these tokens uh, after I'm through because otherwise people could use my tokens as a method of attack, which I wouldn't want. Let's go here. Uh, with these variables in place, we now have the ability to do uh, string interpolation. So it should be set at no auth, but we want to go down here to bearer. And you're going to want to do two open uh, braces token and then two closing braces. And then update that. What you do, you will now have your uh, OAuth tokens. And let me do this. I'll set it to the second one that I just created. So in my case, it's oh, token two that I want to use. Uh -huh. So this just goes through uh, creating it, which we went over. All right, so the next thing that it's going over is repositories. There's really nothing new here. Um, the only thing we're doing is if you call user slash repos like this, it's going to get all of my repositories. Um, if, you, if, if you're doing on this account, obviously you're getting yours. Um, so there's all mine. And that's this one right here. We can also get someone else's repos by users octocat repos. Um, and let's jump over to this documentation, which goes into it a little more fully. There's two types of syntax you're going to see. You're going to see either what's the symbol syntax, which looks like this, or you're going to see the mustache syntax, which looks like that.
They're equivalent. They basically mean some variable, and that variable is the username. So in my case, it's slash user slash noman2000 slash repos. That's what this means. So this is a get request. It doesn't have a body. It only has parameters. So you're able to send over different requests. And as you do so, you'll get slightly different responses. Um, the most important thing there is to look for where that goes. So for example, down here, if I want to change a header that I send, like it has a special accept header, um, I would get rid of this one. I would write it down here, and then I would paste in whatever it is they want me to. And that's how you can control the headers. Body will get to whenever we get to post for the new repo. Mm. Uh, that is exactly what it looks like, so nothing fancy going on there. This will get you someone else's public repos. If you don't have access to uh, their private repos, yeah, you won't be able to see it. So, so far we've been doing gets. Get requests are all supposed to be what's technically called idempotent. Idempotent is a fancy way that means nothing changes. So if I sent this same request 10 times, none of those 10 requests would update anything on the server. They would simply retrieve information. That's why it's called get. Get me some information. But it doesn't expect to actually change anything. If, however, you do a post, this will change things. Post means to create a brand new thing. Um, so in this case, uh, it's for creating a brand new user repository, and that's why we needed access to those repository um, capabilities. And you'll see it right here. That's the uh, URL. This right here is the body information. We see this dash D, that means you're going to send a post request. And so inside the body, you're going to select raw and then set it to JSON. So that way it sort of edits it like this. And then here's some of the settings they used. When you send this, if you don't already have this um, repo created, then it's going to create one, give you its ID back and give you all the information about it. If, however, you already have that repo and you do it again, you're going to get a message that the repository failed and you're going to get some errors, right? Which So that name already exists on the account. And then here's the developer documentation and you'll see that there is a uh, new status code of 422. Which just means it could not uh, do what I asked it to do. The 400 series errors means I messed something up and the 500 series errors means the server messed something up. So one of us is uh, wrong here, and it's me because I already did this. Mm -hmm. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, these things we can, I'm going to mostly ignore because they're just more of the same. So here's getting uh, all the issues for the various repositories that you're part of. Here, um, if you do not have uh, authorization to an organization, you will not be able to get things. So it'll just say um, not found as a response. And you'll see right here that you get a 404. Here, however, I am a member of the Epic Games org. So because of that, I am able to retrieve it, but I don't have anything assigned to me on there. And so more get request. Uh, probably the only one that's any interest is this one. So if I want to see the issues with Rails, I am able to specify optional parameters, like how many results do I want per page and what page am I on. This enables pagination because some issues can go be you know thousands of issues um, inside of there. And then finally is the delete command, and that's where I send a delete request uh, to our created blog. So I send that. And then I look for the response. I got a 404. Da, 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 da. Body right here. So if this happens, I think there's something wrong with the um, with that. But let me try it. 
So here, delete repository, boom. So slash repo, slash owner, and slash repo. And that is... Oops, so here I have a mistake, I need to do that. And here it sends a 204, no content, 200 is successful, but that means it was able to do this, but um, when you delete something, you don't get any content back because you just deleted something. So you just get a response that says, hey, you did it. So if I send that again, now I get the not found again. So see, reading documentation, it helps. Um, and those are the basics, really. You have a couple of other ones that you're gonna see, which are put and patch. Put means, hey, I created something and it exists, but I'm going to overwrite whatever I created with something new. But I'm not creating a new object, I'm just overwriting one that already exists. Patch means I'm gonna take a small piece of an existing object and I'm gonna change one or two things about it. So I'm just gonna patch something versus completely replacing something. And so that's how API URLs work. You're going to see um, the little URL like this. They won't put the API piece because that stays the same. You'll see that referred to as base URL in a lot of stuff. And that's what it means. It means that uh, HTTPS, API, GitHub, etc. Assume that's true for everything. And then all you need to worry about is what you add after that, which would be this stuff. And uh, Postman is really powerful. You can look up some YouTube videos on how to use it for different stuff. Um, when you get into API development, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be covered extensively because it is uh, such an incredibly handy tool and it's cross-platform and free. So all those things make it um, very useful. So hopefully that kind of answers some of your questions around that. Um, it's mostly about being able to read the documentation, have a tool that can test the documentation easily and uh, be able to save the results. You'll see a little thing there. If you hit Control-S, it'll save everything, and I can close all my tabs.